And welcome back to Bitcoin Advisors channel. My name is Chris, bringing it to you here from Westlake Village, California. It is bright, it's early, and I'm gonna give you a first glance look at the markets. Have not even gotten into the charts yet, but I'm gonna go over Bitcoin price action, the PPI report, which came in lower than expected, some of the hotter altcoins, which you just saw up there. So breaking PPI, inflation falls to 0.1% in June, below expectations, which was 0.4%. Core PPI inflation fell to 2.4% in June, below expectations of 2.6. So this is the first time PPI inflation has come in below 1% since January 2021. Yet another sign inflation is falling quickly, and it does see, seem like you know the markets are buying into the narrative. Uh, yep, and this is one of the setups we're going to go over at the end of the show here. Uh, link for a kind of short-term uh, long scalp trade. And uh, what else do I wanna talk about? Uh, well, let's get into Bitcoin price action, some of the underlying market dynamics. And well, uh, Dixie actually first started, starting it off with that. Uh, we did talk about this. Ultimately, Dis Dixie was coming to the bottom side of the range. Well, we broke the range with a full candle body closure below the bottom side of the range. And where's the next target gonna be off of that consolidation? You know, fair to Midland, I'm talking about 98.39 in line with our six month target, which we talked about a long, 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 long time ago, over six months ago. As soon as we tick below the prior six month low, this uh, kind of gravestone parabolic blow off top uh, candle. Sorry, I'm gonna clean up the chart a little bit. So this is, I, I don't know, I call it a gravestone and those typically lead to downside continuation, followed by uh, just a tick below there. And we talked about it six months ago in January. Hey, probably coming down to the nine ultimately and a bit of a deeper target below the nine actually, which I think I just had up there. That 98.38, so that probably lines up a little bit more uh, with the well, purple 200 coming in right there. I do think we're gonna get a bounce there. Wow, that's that's incredible for Dixie to be coming down like that. And I would expect the gold buyers from yesterday are reaping the benefit as gold is up $3.96. And we did talk about gold targets bouncing off this box, heading up to our next target, 2000 an ounce. And just another recap on gold. Uh, when you typically see uh, this type of a consolidation at the highs, you usually don't get a triple top. What you do is you get a triple top, a narrow pullback, and then um, and then continuation. Ultimately, a break through this top side of this uh, this you know major horizontal here, the all time highs on gold, and I think uh, you know continuation target again twenty two seventy nine up to twenty three hundred. If we do break this, surrounding some kind of a world crisis event. Um, and yeah, dollar down bodes well for Bitcoin, bodes well for NASDAQ, up another 1.8%. Getting to the tippy top of the 786. We'll see if we get the pullback there. Um, <clears throat> you know, shout out to Gareth Soloway on that, uh, you know, that triple top scenario for gold. Um, all right, getting in the meat and potatoes here for Bitcoin, still. I imagine stuck in the four hour range. And what Gareth Soloway was talking about the other day is that, hey, look, you know, the fact that gold, you know, stocks are rallying, gold's putting in a bit of a bounce and Bitcoin's just trading sideways. He thinks uh, that's more on the bearish side. Um, I personally think everything's lined up for the bulls still. Um, Got to test the top side of the range, back to the bottom side. And, you know, we're looking for this ascending triangle to break at about 75% full. That's coming in, uh, looks like Friday, Friday of next week. I wonder what's going on Friday next week. Uh, economic data, let's see, next week, if we have anything major. High. High interest, high interest. High impact economic data around the 21st next week, existing home sales, jobless claims. 
Japanese inflation rate. I don't see anything major actually going into next week. Retail sales. I think that does bode well or good for, you know, an overall liftoff going into next week. So the question is what happens tomorrow and over the weekend? So you want to look at those higher term time frames to take over if we're going to remain bullish. How's the weekly looking here? I got to make this one on the shorter side. Consolidation candles, uh, indecision candles, doji candles, whatever you want to call them, four days. Four days of indecision has volatility reset or cross down on the four day below 30,570. That will close. Where's my countdown button here? Two days and two more days. So that one, that's gonna be important. Three day is also losing momentum, kind of in the critical zone. So notice, you know, this doesn't mean, oh, we're gonna just sell off and go down. Well, in fact, we can trend up in this area on the three day time frame. I wanna check out the good old Bollinger Bands. And this is a little trick I learned from the last bull market. Uh, but essentially, once uh, the three day time frame begins to cl close above the topside Trollinger band, um, you know, typically you can, you know, hang out there for some time from 12,000 up to 20,000. That was a good one from 22,000 up to 39,500. And again, a nice little string right there. So, have we hopped on the band yet? We hopped on for a minute. You know, those strong trending moves, you're going to see the three day time frame jump on the topside Trollinger band and uh, or Bollinger band. We're going to hop up there at 32,500 and that is the pivot right there. You know, that three day closure above there, that's going to get it the daily. Very likely this is the pivot 33,000 on the daily. But uh, just getting a daily closure above 31,046 very likely does garner that next move up to 33,000 based on the good old Bollinger Bands. And you can see they're extremely tight here on the daily time frame. We've been talking about this expansion on the daily time frame, gonna get you a 20% move in either direction. So where does 20% take us? Well, in either direction, 20% from here, actually takes you a bit higher, 20%. That's gonna come in roughly at uh, 36,500 and, or call it 37,000 to the upside and to the downside, 20%. Brings you in line with Gareth Soloway's, uh, well, short-term target, I think he said 26.4. But 20% brings you all the way back down to 25,000, the bottom side of the range. So explosive move coming. Watch out for the daily time frame. Currently, momentum is to the upside. So you expect momentum to precede a price action. It is a leading indicator. Hey, if you want to learn more about TA, check out cryptcourses.com. There is a link in the description below. You can get the basic 101, learn how to crypto, grow your crypto with wealth with TA here. Butchered that one. Uh, anyways, check that out. Bringing up some of the hotter altcoins. Uh, Casper has been uh, outperforming Bitcoin. And uh, what am I talking about here? Well, the stronger altcoins are going to uh, outperform Bitcoin in their Satoshi pairing. So you can see, um, you know, you'd want to see Casper priced in well, Tether essentially, uh, not Tether, uh, Bitcoin. I'm looking at the USDT. So this is the dollar pairing. So it's trading at about two cents spot, uh, 0 0.02719. So this thing has had a beast of a rally since the, uh, well, July 23rd, up 38% back to J June uh, this year. Uh, this thing rallied up 100% since what is that? June 6th. And uh, overall, I'm going to look at Casper BTC. Uh, I don't think we have that trading pair. Casper. Is it priced in ETH?
Casper BTC. Nope. Bad example for the moment. Uh, <clears throat> what else do I have? Ave BTC. Here is a temporary example. So something that has outperformed Bitcoin since, well, uh, it would be June. So just recently trending, you know, up 45% versus uh, just regular Bitcoin since June, <laughs> regular Bitcoin. And that is Bitcoin price in dollars. I'm gonna pull it up here and and I got to run here shortly. Bitcoin priced in dollars. Come on, Chris. Since June, right? Since this low right here, you can see, I think what we we're probably up 5%, three and a half percent, 3.6%. Um, so that's, again, just something I'm looking at on the side here. Uh, another one, Compound. I wonder if Comp BTC is a pair. Comp BTC, it is, so comp Bitcoin. So that's the Satoshi pairing. And that's what you wanna see is something that is, you know, since look, June 24th, I mean, skyrocketing. Uh, so it's costing more Bitcoin to buy the same amount of comp. Now it's very hard to do, uh, very hard to do. And as you can see, you know, to the downside, it's been swift. Um, now to the upside, you know, back above here, few more Satoshis, you know, 2,600 Satoshis on a 12 hour and looking for a big leg up here. You know, another 30% higher. So uh, just something to keep your eye on, on Aave and then Bitcoin Cash as well. It's another one that uh, already took a significant leg higher. We talked about this one, perhaps waiting for the 200 exponential if you wanted to grab an altcoin. A lot of people talking about Solana. Solana needs to clear back above 26 to kind of uh, get that next major move. I would say it looks like it's heading up there. Other than that, I think that's it out of me today. Open interest, 9.4 billion. Uh, so uh, taking a small leg up here and don't fail me now. Fear and greed coming in at a 57. We went over the the narrative that the market seems to be buying into and any other hot ones stacks. Yeah, that's a, another one I've been keeping my eye on. Kind of got my little hot list right here. Um, stacks. Well, uh, these these turn hot and then they're not. So, you know, don't don't take it as any financial advice, but stacks. That's the other one. Yeah, stacks measure move. Uh, first target is 72, second target 79, breaking this channel. And Ave, <clears throat> Ave, pretty easy to, you know, way to manage the risk is below this wick or this prior wick. And in fact, you could go all the way back to, to this wick because if we do break back into the channel, we're well, probably gonna head back down to the bottom side of the channel and that is gonna be a failed move. You'll see that pretty quickly just by closing a daily back below that pivot from yesterday. That does look bullish though. And exactly what you would wanna see, you know, they suck the liquidity in, people putting their stop losses right below yesterday's low, and then boom, fire it right back to the upside. Very, very nice. Uh, last one was Ave, and uh, it was a head and shoulders formation. I don't know if I still have it drawn out. But I do, in fact, uh, left shoulder, and I think it was more clearly seen on the hourly time frame. And we did get the retest, bouncing off the green 55, consolidating on the highs. And uh, yeah, so looking for a move back to the range highs on this one. Ave's been continually strong. All right, that's it out of me today, guys. I hope you had a good day. I hope you have a blessed day. I will check back in with you more tomorrow with some more TA and crypto updates. Take care and have a blessed day.